probably you don't like it. Well, we're we're going to do we'll we'll do one of those as a warm up, and then we're going to look at another way to do some of the very same problems. Then you can make your choice of which one you think is 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 the yummiest. So imagine we've got uh, running in a track of some kind, some little roller that happens to be attached to a an arm that uh, is at the, at 45 degrees. Now remember, a lot of these problems just to just to get through them to be able to to do some stuff with them, we have to say this type of thing where we where you say at this angle find the velocity. At any other angle it's going to be a little bit different and these things tend to run through cycles of some kind possibly. So uh, it's a little bit artificial. You know, if you go into this business you're going to need to know what these things are doing at all times. Not just at one single little angle. But we're just getting started here. So this happens to be 45 degrees. And this angle here is 60 at the moment shown. And uh, a couple of the lengths, let's see. This is 125 millimeters. This is 300. And uh, that arm happens to be turning at four radians per second. So we want to find the velocity of the roller in the slot. So maybe I'll call that uh, let's see, a b. And I'll call that d. You'll find out shortly why I've left c out of it. It's not that not that I'm prejudiced against the letter c. Gosh, that would throw out 126 of all the great Sesame Street episodes right there. Just can't have that. All right, so we want to find out the velocity of D. All right, what we worked with on Friday, if you remember, was the relative velocity equation. The fact that the velocity of any one little piece of something is going to be related to two things. One, the velocity of any other piece of that. And remember, this only holds for a rigid body. You can't do this from one body to the next. This is a rigid body equation, and it's a vector equation. Don't forget those two things. So the velocity of one end is related to the velocity of the other end plus what the relative velocity is between the two. D relative to B. If you were sitting on and B looking down at D, what would it appear to be doing? Remembering that uh, uh, it's, it's again a little bit of an artificial construct here in that uh, if you're sitting at B, you have to ignore the fact that they do yourself for moving. Uh, if you were moving at constant velocity, uh, you would only have visual clues anyway that you were moving, as often happens uh, in the car. You know, the, you're going down the highway, you don't know you're moving unless you're looking out the window, other than you're bumping a little bit. Uh, so that that is for a rigid body and is a full vector equation. So if we want to find out the velocity of d, then uh, this is as good a place as any for us to start. And this is what we're working on Friday. The thing to do is uh, start putting together what you know and what you don't know. For example, v, the velocity of d, well, due to the fact that it's in the slot and due to the fact things are going this way at the time, we know the velocity of d must be down that slot and in that direction. It just can't do anything else. So we can use that. Uh, we can say, uh, maybe we want to say B, B in the I direction. Um, maybe just keep it to our normal orientation. We'll call that the minus I direction. 
Don't have to. It doesn't matter uh, what we're looking for is the magnitude of it anyway. But you do have to be consistent with anything else that goes into it. The velocity of B, um, well, that's the same thing in that uh, B and A make up a rigid body as well. So those are also subject to this relative velocity equation for rigid bodies, except uh, there's a little bit of difference. Point A is not moving now in this problem, so uh, B is going to move relative to A. Well, we can, we can envision just what that's going to be because uh, a, this, this rigid body, uh, the arm, link arm AB is pinned down at one end. B is only going to go in that direction. It just can't do anything else. Now, you can use the geometry of the problem to come up with just what, uh, what that angle is, but you can also use the uh, relative velocity equation uh, uh, that we are using on Friday, that this velocity, this relative velocity, can also be found from the cross product of the angular velocity with the position vector between the two. And if we could do that, that would be what we put in here for BB. And we could do the same type of thing for the relative velocity of MD to B. The angular velocity vector DB cross with the position, relative position vector. And that's the kind of thing we are working on Friday. How are you, Frank? Okay. Just woke up? Yeah. Just a little bit of Alright. So, uh, if you need to see it visually too, though, this, all of these equations uh, have three components to them such that if you look at that equation in graphical form it must form a perfect closed triangle and for some of you maybe that's a better way to solve some of these problems um, for example we can look at it this way uh, we know that the velocity of point D relative to point B is always perpendicular to the line connecting the two. So that's got to be the velocity of D relative to B. Because if you were sitting at B, point D couldn't come any closer, couldn't go any farther away by our definition of a rigid body. That means it can only go to your left or your right as you sit at point B looking down the down the arm at that. So we can draw that as a rigid or as a, as a vector triangle and uh, maybe for some of you that, that can help sometimes. So VB looks something like that. I'm not sure just how long it is, but I know it's going to be in about that direction, VB. Add to it VD which has got to be something about like that. VB plus VDB. Those have got to add together to give us the velocity of D, which we know is horizontal. So we know that these two We know that those two, uh, the original part of these two vectors, must have equal and opposite J components for them to end up as a horizontal vector. So uh, 
Uh, either way, you can now solve this maybe using law of sines and cosines, or you can use it as the, the components, or however you want to do it. Either one, they're, they're fundamentally the same thing. It's just uh, for some of them, we need to do this a, at least to come up with a magnitude. So that's what we were working on Friday with a slightly different view to it. Um, actually, another way you could look at it, just in case you're not confused enough. Here's dB. We know that D has to go that way. We know that B has to go this way. And we know that they can't get any closer together. That means they must both have the same velocity along its own length along the arm's own length. I don't know what we call that. Uh, uh, velocity in... Uh, uh, I don't know. What? What do you want to call it? Quick. I don't know. Something. B. Uh, I don't know. B prime. We'll call it B prime. Those, those two components must be the same. Otherwise, point D and point B would be either getting closer to each other or farther apart from each other. All of these are the same thing, are perfectly equivalent to each other, um, and may help you see what's going on a little bit better. One may, may be more to your liking than the other. So if you like vectors and cross products, there you go. You're in hog heaven, right here. Vector cross product heaven. This is it. If you like got a graphics and semi piece of each, there you go. So give it a try. There, whatever you like, whatever works, see if you can come up with the velocity VD in the next couple minutes here working together. Not a mood, Jake, to talk to anybody. Not even me. We used to be so close. And then, uh, just to make sure, we'll come up with a new way to do it, even yet. Will you put up like our? A, is that going to play B to A? Or it's, it, yeah, the, a the order in which these are read, whether it's on R or V, and we're going to have acceleration on Friday, it's if you're at A, where is B? Or if you're at A, how is B moving? So it's always drawn, the, the vector itself is always drawn from the second letter to the first. So that's our D relative to B. And you do have to have that right if you're doing the cross product. Well, you have to have it right if you're... Well, I guess you don't need it for the, the diagrams. Got it? Yeah. Which one of those three did you like? First one. Yeah, the, the students don't typically like doing cross products, but we have found on these 2D problems they're they're fairly straightforward ones because uh, the the vector in which they result is only going to be in the z direction. There's really only one component to it.
that's the name. We already got the direction. But yeah, that's it. How do you find omega dB? How do you find this? No, the one above it. Get it. No, that one is given. I mean, you just leave it in there in terms of omega dB. Uh, yeah, it's, remember, there's two unknowns because this is a vector equation. It's really two equations. So the two unknowns would be uh, well, VB you're going to know from there, VD and omega TV. And you could solve the equation, I think, so that you can avoid even finding that. You know, if you do the right uh, elimination first. Um, remember, each of these are. Full vector equations, so don't come to me looking for help if you don't have vector signs over them. Doesn't hurt necessarily to find omega um, dv, just make sure the sign is right on it because you, you know in what direction it should be rotating to give you confidence in your algebra. Wait, so we don't need to do this at any uh, Yeah, you do. Because you need, well, you, no, you don't have to if you can find VB some other way. Uh, but you need not just the magnitude of VB, you also need the direction. But you can get that from this drawing for this one. So, no, you do not need to do that if you can do it from the diagram itself. Because you know that that's going to be, uh, what, a 30, 30 degree angle here. By whatever method is fine.
Well, this, is, remember, is actually two equations. So you have an I component here, an I component here, and they must equal uh, the velocity you need. And then you have two J components, and they must be zero, because oh, D has no J component to it. So you know automatically for the vector B D put a minus in there. Oh uh, X Y that is zero. And you can use that as one of your equations. It's not uh, Okay, uh, yeah, now this is really V, D, and the 
I direction. It's, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not minus this. It's minus this magnitude of the direction. And then when you do this side of it, you should have uh, a couple I components you can put together, and they must equal that. And you'll have a couple J components together, which will equal zero because there is no J component here. And that's the same thing as we see here when you put these two vectors together you end up with no J component. Yeah. Where, do you, where do you get the omega dB from? This is two equations, because it's a vector equation, yeah. in I and J directions, two unknowns. VD, the magnitude VD is unknown, and the magnitude omega dB is unknown. So you can solve those two equations for the two unknowns. You might be able to solve it without even bothering with that unknown since it wasn't asked for. But uh, I don't I don't remember about what, how the algebra shakes out. Yeah, it looks like you're going to have to find omega dB uh, in the J direction and then use it in the I direction to finish the problem. Okay. So, Bobby, did you find your mistake? Just a little math error? Yeah, I was negative. Oh man, those omegas, they kill you, don't they? All right. Uh, we're going to come back to that in a second as we look at another method. So we'll start with a clean drawing when we get there. All right. So we've seen um, from other things we've done, that any time we have a rigid body rotating about some particular point, and in this case I'm going back to a, a quick discussion of uh, pure rotational motion, no translation, then we're going to use what we've got here to go to the more general problems we are working on where there's rotation and translation. So remember back when we had pure, um, pure rotation. So for argument's sake, let's say it was rotating that way. We know now that any other point on the object, we can figure out its velocity from the fact that it will be moving perpendicular to the line connecting the two and with a velocity that's proportional to the distance between them and that angular velocity there. In other words, the velocity of A equals R A omega. That's nothing new. That, that's just from Physics 1. Um, but we, we've maybe taken a little bit farther in that we also know that any other point is going to be moving proportionately slower if it's near to that center or proportionally faster if it's farther um, by similar triangles. In fact, uh, if we label these points, what we're really saying is that the whole body, every part of that body, every line we could inscribe on it, every two points we could put on it, uh, are all moving with the same angular velocity, and that that's proportional to their distance away from the, from the center. So if we take that, solve for omega that's the same for all of them, we have just that, etc. where that RA and RB is the distance from the, the center of rotation. And we could even take it 
back off the uh, other side, just continue this line straight through, and we know then that the velocity of any other point is all found from the same similar triangle. We could do this any place we need. We could even do it some brand new place because they all have the same angular velocity. Plus, we've already used this several times when we looked at an object rolling without slipping. We know that the center is moving half the speed as a point on the opposite side at that instant. We've done that in a couple problems. Is that right? Look kind of familiar? At that instant. In fact, uh, uh, since that point is uh, sort of uh, uh, ephemeral in that in a couple, in, uh, an instant later that point doesn't even exist and we have a new center, a new contact point, this is really what you might call an instantaneous center. It's only the center of rotation for one instant. An instant later, there's a new contact point, and it's an instantaneous center. So we're going to use that idea now for uh, our, our next, next approach to these general motion problems, the idea of an instantaneous center. For an object that's in pure rotation, it's obvious. Not only is it an instantaneous center, it's a constant center. But for an object in general motion, like a rolling wheel, this idea of instantaneous center can be quite advantageous for us if we can find it. Turns out it's not too big a deal. Any rigid body at any instant in time is rotating about an instant center somewhere. We just have to find it. So imagine we've got one point going in that velocity. And some other point moving with that. I just want to get a decent picture so things will work out right to start with. So we'll say we've got some other point, VB. It looks like something like that. We want to figure out something about the motion of that object at that time. We know that at any time, any point is moving perpendicular to the center point. It's, it's obvious if it's pinned at that point, but it's also true if it's uh, in general motion. So if we draw the line perpendicular to these velocities, We know the instant center must lie somewhere along that line because V A, A is moving perpendicular to that line at that instant. The same is true for B. Where those two cross is the instantaneous center. And we know that those two lines connecting them all always have the same omega as each other. If we can geometrically find where that point C is, thus get the distances AC and CB, then we can figure out the velocities. If we know the velocity, we can find out the uh, angular speed of the body or whatever it is that we need to find for any point. So you you uh, do a little sketch looks 
similar to this. See where you can figure out that the that that uh, the instant center is. So make some sketch like that and just uh, figure out where the instant center is. We'll see if we come up with about the same thing. Notice it does not depend at all on the magnitude of uh, those two velocities. The location of the center doesn't. Well, it kind of does, I guess, because the farther they are from the center, the faster they're going to be moving. But in terms of just sketching it out now to determine where that center is, it doesn't matter. You're in technical freehand sketching too. You don't need that kind of help. Right, Jay? Sure. You use, see, you didn't use your straight edge. You have the <coughs> awesome cool one in all, the hand at all times. You got one of those, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Very simple again. Perpendicular to the velocity. Nothing else matters, and it's very easy, as you'll see in some of the pictures we're going to work on, that it's very easy to get distracted by other things in the diagram. Perpendicular to the velocity only, you should have gotten a center maybe somewhere down there. Notice, too, that it does not necessarily need to be on the body. It's just an instantaneous center. Nothing changes. If I simply change the shape of the body to do that, it's still the instant center. So it need not exist on the body itself. Once we find that, you can see the direction of rotation. And then using the geometry there, hopefully we can find the rotation. Oh, Yep. About the first drawing, how do you know it's going to rotate counterclockwise? That's the the oh, on the first one. Uh, first one, I wouldn't. I guess it couldn't move like that, could it? The the, the velocity arrows I picked because these two arrows are moving towards each other. They have a component such that the distance AB would shrink. So this one was uh, just a bad sketch. I need to need to move B out more this way, I guess. Good catch, Alex. That was just a bad sketch. It would work if the two velocities are like, really different sizes. Though. There. Now it's rotating about there. That looks a little better. What do we? So the original drawing will work if the uh, two velocity vectors are really different sizes, right? If like VA you know, was really big, VB was real small, it's still so be rotating. No, uh, because the location of the center has nothing to do with the size of the velocities. It only has to do with their direction. And as I had that one originally, where I had A moving this way and B moving something like that. When you find the instantaneous center, there's no way a rigid body can be rotating about a single point at any instant such that they're doing this. Because this one has got to be going that way, and this one has got to be going that way. And that's not possible for a rigid body. They must have the same angular velocity these lines must have the same angular velocity as each other because they're on a rigid body. So that was, unfortunately, and I apologize, just a bad sketch. All right. 
let's go back to the original problem we we're doing today. get this to help us then. So that was A, that was B, that was D. Now you know why I didn't have a point C because that's going to be the instant center. All right, we know D has got to move like that because it's down the slot. We know V can only move like that because uh, arm A is pinned at the other end. Therefore, there's some place where these two perpendiculars must cross. And you got to be careful with the geometry that it doesn't make you think it's some place where it isn't. I don't have a protractor for this. I'm just sketching it at the, the board so it can come out in, in pretty, pretty different spots. So be careful with it. find out this distance, we know it's angular velocity, we can then find velocity of d straight from that. Lob sines, lob cosines. On this thing, uh, sometimes the geometry is a little bit easier, sometimes you need, you need uh, something like that. So, law of uh, you have two angles, usually the law of sines, I guess, works better for that. You can figure out what this angle is. Could you and then, two right triangles as well? 
there. Yeah, wh whatever geometry works for you, as long as you get this distance CD, because the velocity of D is equal to the angular velocity of, not A, CD, times the distance between those two RCD. Omega CD, we've already got. It's got to have the same angular velocity as BC does. So we only need to find that distance there. And you can do it by law of sines or law of lacks and law of cosines would be easier, probably. So, what, uh, DC over sine of angle, the angle at corner B, which is what, 105 degrees? Does that, Bobby? Just, have, does that just like have some three degrees at the bottom or two? Yeah, well this arm was at 60, so this angle must be 30, because together they're 90. Remember, this is vertical. This is this is vertical, and this is known to be 60, so that must be 30. What is the value of BC? That doesn't go directly to A. It doesn't go directly to A, as a matter of fact. But it runs through that member, right? But uh, see, A. This this was again. You know, these are sketches on the fly. So A is really over here somewhere. D is not necessarily right above A. It just kind of looks like it in my drawing, but it's not. So V B has to be perpendicular to itself. V V B must be perpendicular to that arm because it's pinned down at one end. To to make this more to scale, that's one twenty five. That fifty A is really much farther back down here. That's more what it looks like if you draw it to scale. Because this is well over twice as long as that. So using the law of sines, which remember is the magnitude of one side over the angle opposite it, that ratio holds for any of the three sides in the uh, in the diagram. So, see the importance of technical freehand sketching. You, you got to be really careful that your sketches don't tell you an answer is there that isn't, just because your sketch happened to come out however it came out. What do we? It's a lot different. Well, originally we had them. 1.64 meters per second and then we divide. Yeah? Now we get 1.39 Well, let's uh, let's check. DC, so solving this, DB is 125. And then we have sine B, which is uh, 105 over sine 30. So what's that come out to be? That's that's the side, the length of DC. What do you get? And now D should be Oh, uh yeah, sorry, I, I, I good day here today. Sorry, this this 
angular velocity is not equal to this one. That's why this was in trouble, because they're not on the same instant center. So, um, remember this was built on their individual velocities. So that, those two together then represent with this point C a, a separate rigid body. So actually this is, this is omega dB. Because it's the same angular velocity as F. So, uh, so we need this is the omega uh, AB. Yeah. So that equals BB over R BC. BB we know. RBC we can find uh, from the other the other uh, direction. BC equals um, same yeah same same general portion there. That we have so 125 uh, over sine 30 times b. No, wait, why don't we want this one? So it's sine 45. That's BC, and then that goes in here. We already know the velocity of B because it's 300 meters, millimeters away, moving at four radians per second. And BC is, what is what's this come out to be? 176. And, uh, meters so that they match. And then that is up here. So what person? 679. No, that's not right. Yeah, that's right. And that's what we had before, right? So we do get the same answer. Okay, that one, the geometry is a little tricky. RCB, which was what, 20? What? Yeah. Um, when I break that up, like instead of using the law of sines, when I break that up into two right triangles and I just add the uh, x components, I get a different answer. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's what I got. I should have Yeah. 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 To get what that distance? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know how you're going to do that on this triangle because you don't know this distance or that distance. Oh, we don't know that. Oh, yeah, because that's not to A. Oh shoot. <laughs> okay. I corrected that already. No, I know. I just. Uh, that's that's the velocity here of this, which is this whole arm moving at four radians per second, and that distance is 300 millimeters. So it's the product of those two. That's VB. 
All right, pictures can throw you off mightily, so let's be careful. Where did what come from? Okay. All right, well, let's try another one with a little more careful drawing then. Sorry about that. Make sure we get that right this time. Got that part right. Uh, very easy to 
mistake to make. Check for the done there. when you find the instant center. What's point B going to do? Straight down, because the other end is pinned. That's all it can do at that instant. So there's VB. In fact, we can figure out how big it is because we know the distance, we know the angular velocity. What's A going to do? It's got to go horizontal to the right because uh, that's the way B is going to pull it and it's pinned at the other end too. What's your next step then? Perpendicular to what? The velocities. So here's one velocity, the perpendicular to that. So we know the instant center lies somewhere along there. Perpendicular to the other one, and where they cross is the instant center. Yep. Um, for the velocity of B, how do you know that it's not perpendicular with the member AB? Because it's the arm BD is pinned at the other end. But it's also pinned at AB. This is. These are separate rigid bodies. This rigid body is moving at both ends. This thing is in general motion. This is in pure rotation. So B cannot do anything other than follow in a circle around point D. Now, don't make the mistake of thinking, well, if this thing kept running, sooner or later it's not going to work. because. Like I said, we're looking at these at a particular instant in time, not as if they're going through an entire circular motion, which they could. Well, I don't know, maybe they could. Maybe when BD got all the way over here, there's still enough length left and everything to reach. I don't know. But that's not the question. The question is, at this instant, At this instant, find the velocity of A. Do we have any angles? Uh, do you need any? Now with these velocities, you know that this rigid body has some angular velocity like that at that instant where A, B, and C make up an instantaneous rigid body. So now you can say, let's say, uh, omega must be V A over R a, C, and that must be equal to V, B over R, B, C, because those three points now make a, an instantaneous rigid body. And it's this is the same sense of rotation that the piece uh, AB itself would have. So then you can solve that for VA, you can solve it for omega if you need it.
remember the instant center is perpendicular to the velocity no matter what the arm you're doing. Right, Pat? Very tempting to just think the velocity. Oh, right, no, let's see. Uh, do you know what VB is, or can you find it? We know what VB is because it's that angular velocity by that distance. So, uh, so solving for VA. What's VB? 0 0.15 meters per second. Yeah, 2 times 75, 0 0.15 meters per second. RBC, BC is, well, well if this is, uh, let's see, this has got to be 50. How, how do you know that? Right? Because I said that that this was level with the midpoint, uh, right? So, so now we have a triangle that's 50 there, and what else do we know about it? Are we missing something? Yeah, that's what I was stuck. Nothing else here on the page. What? Magic number, you said? Um, yeah, I think something's missing, missing here. Because yeah. all we have, all I have written down is at fifty. I have written down, huh? I have, in my solution, I have, that's 175. Does but that give you the distance between the two points by spin? No, I think what I had was the length of that. And I just I must have recopied my diagram and not drawn, written that down. So how long would that be then? Does that come out to be a nice round number? If you square that and square that and add them and square root that? Does that come out to be a nice round number? That uh, doesn't sound nice and round, does it? So, so what's this angle? Is that nice and round? We always have nice, perfect round numbers in engineering. All angles are 45, all dimensions are multiples of 5. I don't know. I'll just go with that. Yeah, go with 175. I think uh, I think it was just probably on the other diagram that I didn't really copy it. We keep in track. How many mistakes is that today? seems easy if you were uh, listening and caught that it was at the midpoint.
if presented right. So. See, now I've got to do this again next year. I've got to teach dynamics again next year so I can fix this tape. Well, 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 omega equals VA over RAC. You have RAC. Omega must not be the two rates. No. No. That's the angular speed of this arm. It's not the angular speed of what we really have is a rigid body that's like that at that instant. Where one side is the other arm whose angular velocity we don't know and made up of, of the connectors to the, the uh, instant center. So that's a different angular velocity than the one that was given, which is what? BD? you choose by whichever method you want. Here's the uh, your get out of class question. Have a wheel rolling such that its center is going 1.2 meters per second. Well, let me make sure that's right. Nothing else has been right today. Yeah, 1.2 meters per second. And there's an inner gear attached to it upon which is riding A, a rack, so that's a, a, a gear and rack system. Outer gear, outer wheel is 150 uh, radius. Inner is 100. Find three things. Right. Um, 150 and 100 what? Meters? Or millimeters? No meters. Meters? <laughs> I don't know. I can't really tell. Size of a football field. A football field and a half. I want the Mex Club to make that for extra credit. Find V of the rack. Find the angular. speed of the wheel and find the velocity of point D. Which is level with the center. And you can do it by whatever method you want. Instantaneous center, relative velocity, or I don't know if we have any other names. of the wheel, or in other words, the center of the wheel, since that, if, if that was on an axle, 
uh, attached to a cart or something, that's the velocity. But they're all coming together. Right. Um, well, is there an instant center here? There always is. Every rigid body has an instant center at any instant. Is there one here? Here? Haven't we already talked about that being an instant center? Anyway, plus, you know that uh, the center's got to go level with the ground. This upper rack has also got to go level with the ground. And so if we draw a perpendicular to the two of those, they line right up. Somewhere on that line has got to be the velocity. And we've already done that type of problem here. And then B, I'm uh, sorry, D must be perpendicular to that line. And notice, Jake, since that distance is not the same as that distance, that velocity can't be the same as that velocity. C, that A, and the rack B. You can find out what the angular speed is, and then you know that ratio is the same for any other point on the object at that instant. the angular velocity for the entire rigid body is the same. Wait, about three minutes and get out of it. Um, right. You're saying that the omega is the same? Yeah. The angular velocity, this is the same around yeah. that as it is at around C? Yes. Because they're all in the same body, they all, they all, all of those points are rigid bodies on the wheel, so all of them must have the same angular velocity. The angular velocity isn't the same when you go from that to some other rigid body. For example, the rack itself is a rigid body, and it has a completely different angular velocity. In fact, it's zero. But at any instant on the, well, any objects on the rigid body all have the same angular velocity to any point, not just C, but to any point. Because the whole wheel has that same angular velocity. Now, if they're slipping, that would be altogether different. Then point C would have its own velocity that would be a rigid, uh, an instant center somewhere else. Can I get a check on this? Yep. The velocity at D? I had a different one somewhere. No, that's okay. I said you could do it. Yep, that's right. Uh -oh. So you get to go early. How awesome is that? A whole minute. Get moving. Okay, good. Time's just ticking away. That is, yeah. What's that? Oh, uh, yeah. So make sure you label that. <clears throat> What's omega going to be? Oh, okay. What's the first velocity of the two? This? Or B. B. That's two. 
Two meters per second. Omega is eight. Omega is eight. Yeah. Omega eight. Yeah. eight yeah. yeah. radians per second. Yep. Good. Now everybody's got it. 